Hey everybody and welcome to Foundations. We are on day 10 of these yoga lessons, these tutorials that we've been doing. Today we are going to learn Downward Facing Dog. So there's a reason I didn't put this pose right in the beginning of the series. It's because I don't really consider it an easy pose, not that really any of the poses are easy, but it's not the pose I like to start people out on. And if downward dog is not for you, you should know that anytime in a class um, that there is a downward facing dog and it's not for you or you're just not there yet in your practice, or maybe you know that day you're not feeling it, you can always substitute with tabletop pose, which we have already learned. So I will show you how to do Downward Facing Dog. I don't have any props today. Um, you are always welcome to add props in if they make you feel more comfortable. You're of course welcome. One prop I will mention that I don't have out here today that you could use as a chair. I've been learning more and more about chair yoga and how people use chairs recently. And I do know that often people will place a chair at the top of their mat for downward facing dog and have their hands on the chair instead of on the ground. So other than that, the pose is very similar and I'll be teaching it without any props. So let's just do a quick spinal warm up um, and go through a couple of the poses that we know already. So come to tabletop. You've got your wrists under shoulders and your knees under your hips. And then connect breath and movement. We'll inhale, drop the belly. And exhale, round the spine, tuck the tailbone, drop the head. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat pose. Keep going and move at the pace of your own breath. So one breath per movement here. As you move through cow, really stretch the belly. And as you move into cat, really puff up through the back and see if you can find a nice stretch in the back here. And at this point, if you want to add an extra movements here, maybe moving side to side, you can go ahead and do that. Anything that feels good. Allowing yourself to be creative as you settle into this space on your mats. All right. So let's bring the left foot up for low lunge. So if you need to give it an assist, you can just grab your, your foot behind the ankle here and pop it up there low lunge so you can stay grounded here or you can lift i'm just going to stay grounded pausing here hands can come to blocks of course and then i'm going to shift my hips back for half split so i really you can keep your knee bent here i really just want to get into the hamstrings a little bit because down dog is definitely a hamstring opener we want to open the whole back line of the body in downward facing dog so wow, let's wake up the hamstrings. You can find movement. Actually, I think that's a little bit better if you really want to wake up the, the hamstrings. You can kind of pop back and forth a little bit. Maybe not pop, but gently pulse back and forth. Good. And again, hands can be on blocks here if this fold is really intense for you. Especially because we're not doing too much of a warm up today. So go easy on yourself. We're just gonna be learning some poses, not a full practice. All right, so let's just slide that foot back and do the, repeat that on the other side. Bring your right foot up between the hands. Good. So we're in a low lunge chair. And remember that we're not on a balance beam. We are on railroad tracks. So you've got, imagine your feet, your knees, your legs are railroad tracks. You're not trying to get everything all in one line like you're standing on a balance beam. Rather, it's more like two parallel lines. Hips, knees, ankles, feet. Everything nice and stable. All right, let's shift the hips back, half splits. And again, 
Maybe find a little movement, just pulses back and forth, and you're welcome to keep your knee bent. A lot of times, we think we need to make ourselves look exactly like the person whose mat's beside us in class, or exactly like the person who's leading the class in the video. But there are all sorts of, of alternates and modifications that we can use that sometimes are better for our bodies than you know whatever our neighbor is doing because each body is in a different place every day. Good. All right, so I'm gonna step that foot back and let's move into downward facing dog. So walk your hands forward and the length of your dog, you know, from hands to feet, how much space you're taking up lengthwise on your mat will be different for every person and you can experiment with it and see if maybe you need to shorten or lengthen your dog. I'm gonna tuck my toes here as I prepare to lift the hips to downward facing dog. But before I do, I'm gonna take a nice look, nice long look at my hands and see that I've got my arms ready to pop up here into downward facing dog. So my fingers are spread really wide here and I'm pressing down through the palms and the pads of all the fingers, especially your thumbs and index fingers, which should be spread so they're making kind of a fish hook shape. Now, I often give the cue, and many people do, that you should have your index fingers pointing up at the top of your mat in a straight line. However, it's more important that you've got the rotation in the shoulders correct and that's kind of a fancy way to put it, but look down at what we call the eyes of your elbows. So this is this crease in the inner elbow here. Now you don't want this to be facing downwards. I don't know if you, how much you can see from far away in this video, but the eyes of my elbows are kind of pointing down towards the mat. I want those to be moving. So they're pointing either towards each other or maybe a little bit forward, and that will correct the rotation in the shoulder joint. So if you can't get that without turning your hands out a little bit more so that maybe your fingers are pointing towards the corners of the mat, that's okay. Check the eyes of the elbows. Have them rolling forward, pointing forward or towards each other. Good. So we've got a nice strong foundation in the hands and then the arms built. Now draw the shoulders down away from the ears and puff up through the back here. So we want to find a lot of strength and stability in the shoulders here. I've got my toes tucked. And when I lift my hips, remember you don't have to straighten your legs all the way. In fact, let's start with bent knees. Ready? Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna step my feet up a little bit. Good. So sometimes what I see in people who haven't had a lot of experience practicing yoga is they're kind of forward like this, almost like they're in part, partly in a plank position. We wanna gently start to open the shoulders as we bring the ears back in line with the upper arms. Shoulders are away from the ears, so we're not scrunching shoulders up by the ears, but we've got plenty of space there. Again, rooting down through the whole entire hand, palms, fingers, especially thumbs and index fingers. Good, and you can keep your knees bent. This will help you work your way into the backs of the legs especially. And we want this spine to be nice and long here. So imagine yourself growing long all the way from your tailbone to the top of your neck here, the base of the skull, that's the, the top of the spine. Good. We'll just take some nice deep breaths here in Downward Facing Dog. Deep breath in, and deep breath out, exhale. Take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, let it go. We're breathing through the nose here. Deep breath in, and deep breath out, exhale. Twice more, one deep breath in, and a deep breath out. One more breath here, breathing in, 
and breathing out. Good, now let's lower the knees back down to the mat. And we'll just sit back on the heels and shake out the wrists. Roll it out, it feels nice on my wrists. And that's it. So downward facing dog, if it feels difficult at first, that's okay, that's very normal. Rolling out the wrists. Let's take a cleansing breath. So find a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth and exhale. All right, so that is downward facing dog. And if it feels difficult at first, that's perfectly normal. Again, I don't think this is a really easy pose. I think it's one that as yogis, we continue to work on over years and years and our dog grows and changes and so do we. It's a good pose to practice in front of a mirror or have a friend maybe uh, take a picture of you or make a video of you so you can kind of assess where you are in your downward facing dog. Take a look at your spine and see if it's nice and straight and long. Um, but next time, we're gonna start putting all these poses together and it's very exciting. We're gonna have our first class. I hope to see you there and namaste.